Right now, I'm in the upland forest. This is where the amphibians spend most of their time. They spend their time underground, in mouse burrows, under rocks, under logs. And in the early spring, when the snow starts to melt and we get those first soaking rains, the amphibians come up out of the ground and they march in huge numbers on some nights towards the wetland. And now when they come down the hill, instead of walking up and over the busy road, what they do is they encounter this wall. When they hit the wall, they walk along the wall, which leads them directly to our amphibian tunnel. These retaining walls or drift fence are absolutely critical to the success of these crossings. They funnel the animals directly into the tunnel. This is the south tunnel. And the migrating amphibians emerge on the other side of the tunnel, on the wetland side in one piece, which wasn't the case in the old days before the tunnel, and they head to the wetlands where they breed. So this wetland complex, known locally as the Heisinger Swamp, is the other absolutely critical part of the amphibian's habitat. Um, this is where they lay their eggs in these fish, fishless vernal pools and where those eggs hatch and the young emerge and then make the same migration march the other way back up to the hardwoods where they spend the rest of the year. So when we designed these culverts, we wanted them to pass amphibians, but we also wanted to build them big enough so that other animals, mammals, could, could use them. We've been monitoring them with remote cameras ever since. We use a time lapse where the camera shoots one photo per minute during the migration period and we scroll through those and we can count the number of amphibians that are going back and forth under these culverts. So I'm here today to change out the cameras. We found that the older cameras give off a slight infrared flash, which was actually startling some bobcats and we saw them in our photos turning around. These newer ones loaned to us from the Nature Conservancy, Fish and Wildlife, and VTrans do not give that. They're called stealth cameras. So the reason the Moncton Road site rose to the level of needing an infrastructure fix like this is the fact that this is a regionally significant population. The big problem here is that there's a busy road in between the two pieces of their habitat. If this road was just a dirt road, it wouldn't be a big deal. We'd lose some amphibians during the migration but the population would thrive. With a busy road like this, we were finding that over 50% of the animals were being killed during migration. And that was with a crew of maybe six people out here on a crossing night, counting them, but also moving them out of the way of traffic. That wasn't sustainable. This is a super busy road, and it's, it's not conducive to having volunteers out here on a dark and busy night. The cars just, zoom by here really fast. This project was a true partnership. It started with a grassroots effort from a local conservation commission and a regional watershed group, but it leveraged some VTrans federal highways money through the Municipal Assistance Bureau. It got a transportation alternatives grant, which really put this project in motion. After that, the project received money from U.S. Fish and Wildlife to support it and then there were other fundraising, local fundraising campaigns. So it was a true partnership between state, federal, and local partners. The monitoring with these cameras that we've done for the past four years demonstrate that these, these culverts work. We've passed over 2,000 amphibians every year through these safely back and forth. So hopefully this is an inspiration for other groups to get together with their federal partners, their, their local partners, their state partners, and find solutions together.